we are now going to go over the PITR, PETR, and PXTR. So the first one we have the PITR, and PITR stands for the proxy ITR, right? So the proxy ingress tunnel router. And this one is a LISP infrastructure device that provides connectivity um, basically between non LISP sites and LISP sites by attracting non LISP site traffic that is destined to LISP sites and encapsulating this traffic to devices of ETR that are deployed at LISP sites. And then we have the PETR. So the P ETR is the proxy ETR or the proxy egress tunnel router, um, which is another LISP infrastructure, infrastructure device that allows EIDs at LISP sites to successfully communicate with devices that are located at non-LISP sites. And then we have the PXDR and this, this device basically what it does is it does the same function of it, it does the PITR and then it also does the PETR. So it does both functions in just one device. In a lot of locations, um, they will have when they do this uh, deployment, they will do it in just one device. So they will use they will they will have a PXTR instead of a PETR and a PITR, just like the MR, the the um, the MR and and the MS, right? Like we talked on the previous videos. Uh, so now let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Uh, so, what if a site that is outside of a Lisp domain, like a site that is not running Lisp, and we need to communicate with that site? Like, what happens? How do we? How, how does that work? Right. Um, so let's. We're gonna have this example over here that we have this um, network over here, five 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 six 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 and seven seven seven, and um, this is a non-LISP site. Basically, it's not part of the LISP domain over here. So, um, what we need, what we what what we will need is a PITR and a PETR to be able to communicate with a non-LISP site like this one over here. And this is because non-LISP site cannot send map register to add their network to the map server like we observed on the on the other videos right they cannot register the network so this EIDs over here they cannot just send it to this um, MRS because this MRS is only part of the Lisp um, network so and also the non Lisp site this one over here cannot send map requests to the map resolver to find about the R lock uh, for an EID. So therefore, we need a way to communicate with this non-LISP site or any other non-LISP site, which is through the PETR and the PITR. But if you combine both of them, um, it is a PXTR. All right. So the way that this actually happened is that let's say that uh, we have an ITR send a map request for an EID of 555555. So this one over here, the MR and the MS server, right, is going to look into its database. And well, basically this one is going to be the, the MR, right, when you ask for the map request. Um, it is going to ask for this um, EID or this network, right? And the MR is going to look in its database and it's going to, ha, huh, I don't have that. So it's going to reply with a negative map reply saying that, hey, we we do not, we don't have this network here. It's not part of the Lisp network, right? So what happens when you do not have, when you don't, you don't have the routes in a legacy environment, right? The packet gets trapped. But in Lisp, what happens is, we are going to send it to the default gateway and the default gateway in this instance is going to be the PXDR. And what it's going to do, it's going to encapsulate it and it's going to send it to the PXDR or the PETR, whatever it is, if they have two different devices. Right? 
and right we are going to encapsulate it over here and send it over to the either the PXTR or the PETR. For this instance, it's going to be the PETR um, because when we encapsulate it, we need to de encapsulate it for it to be able to go out to the non LISP site. Because if we do not de encapsulate it with the PETR, the non LISP site won't be able to know, it won't be able, you know, because it doesn't talk LISP basically. So what's going to happen, right? It's going to send it this way to the default gateway. The default gateway is going to know where it is. It's going to send it down to this non lisp site. This non lisp site, uh, since it is the encapsulated, they're probably running some, uh, it's probably going to be a BGP, uh, right? A, a BGP uh, routing protocol, and they're going to be able to communicate. So then the non lisp site is going to send it back to uh, to this default gateway. And what's going to happen is when it's coming in, it is going to um, be um, received by the PITR because it needs to be encapsulated for us to be able to go to the correct, back to the correct location because it is a Lisp domain over here. Make this channel grow by donating. You can go to ccdt.com slash donate and you can either do it through PayPal or Patreon. If you select the PayPal option, um, you can select any amount you want. On Patreon, we have three different membership, three, five, and nine dollars per month, and you can cancel whenever you want. Also, if you haven't done so, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel at CCNA Daily Tips. Go ahead and subscribe. Thank you, guys. Bye bye.